Hello everybody and welcome to this, our first exercise in module 15-2, where now we're looking at multiple linear regressions where we are starting now to incorporate these things called dummy variables. Dummy variables, just another name for categorical variables, which as the name implies, allows us to now incorporate categorical information or non-numerical data into our regression model. So when we're talking about non-numerical data, categorical data, what does it sound like? Categories. So we've got different groups. We can split our sample into different groups based on specific characteristics about that particular group. So in this example, I'm feeding off of a previous exercise, 15.1b, where we had develop this estimated regression equation that, that related a person's age and their years of experience to their salary. In that exercise, we had found some pretty significant multicollinearity. We resolved that problem by removing that variable that was experience because it wasn't contributing anything to that model beyond what age already was. And that we found improved our model. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to incorporate a dummy variable to determine whether or not having a graduate degree impacts salary. So here we have our further revised model where we have this person's expected salary as a function of age and whether or not they have a graduate degree. So this variable, this is the categorical variable one of the defining and really important characteristics about a dummy variable is that it can only, and there's no exceptions to this rule, it can only ever take a value of zero or a one. No exceptions, a dummy variable, never two, never three. I know you might be thinking, well, Peter, what if you have three or four or 10 categories? Well, yes, we can deal with that, but it still results in dummy variables with values of zero or one. So if you're thinking about how do we do this with multiple categories, hold on, we'll get to that in the next exercise. This one, we have two categories. We have those who do not have a graduate degree and those who do have a graduate degree. So that dummy variable, the, 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 the dummy variable defines those two groups. You have it or you don't. And in order to code that non-numerical information, well, we take this dummy, which this is really our X2, and we say, okay, if you do not have a degree, then we define X2 or we give X2 the value of zero. So this is without the degree, x2 equals one with the degree. And so you can see that this is coded here, is equal one if you have it, zero otherwise. So if you're doing this in Microsoft Excel or in any other statistical program, you cannot have a column of data that is yes or no, or that has a degree, does not have a degree. You can't actually have non-numerical data in there. So what you have to do is you have to code it with a series of zeros or ones. So you replace, if your data says no, you don't have the degree, well, you replace the no's with a zero, you replace the yeses with the one. And it doesn't matter which way you do it it will impact your interpretation of the coefficient, but there's not really a right or a wrong way. The way that you define your variables determines what is called the base case or the reference case. And that reference case is the point against which the other values are compared against. So in this exercise, we have implicitly set up as our base case those people who do not have a graduate degree. Then we have those people who do have a graduate degree. And what we will see is that the estimated coefficient provides us with the point estimate of the difference 
in those who have it, who have the graduate degree, compared to those who do not. So compared to that base case, compared to those who do not have the graduate degree. So before we get into this regression output, effectively what we have done here is we have taken our data and here we have, let's instead of just using Y, we have salary. And then we have that continuous variable still. That continuous variable is age. And we have a positive relationship. We can see that down here. You all know how to read this output. So we have a positive relationship. Now in the previous exercise, when we looked at this type of model, I would have had maybe a scatter plot that looked you know, something like this, showing this positive relationship. And we had that linear association, that linear relationship between those two variables, between age and salary. Well, now we've split that group. We've split that sample into two groups. So instead of just having all of these red dots, now what I have is really two groups. Let's just start fresh. So maybe I have, here's this first group. And those red points, those represent those with the degree. And then we have here these blue points which before all we had as a variable was age. In the first model, we weren't distinguishing between whether or not you had a degree or not. So all of these dots, they were all red. But now I've incorporated this additional piece of information. Now I can distinguish within that sample. I have those with a degree and I have those without a degree. And so this allows us to effectively now estimate two. Those are those with and without. So I'm really estimating two linear relationships simultaneously. Because this coefficient, it's not a slope anymore. Because that dummy variable, it's not a continuous variable. It's a yes or a no variable. It's on or it's off. So our point estimate of beta 2, well that acts on the y-intercept. So if here's my y-intercept b0, here's that y-intercept b0, that would be b2. And so that vertical difference so now give me some age of interest, I don't know, 13 years old. Pretty young for someone earning a salary, I guess, first number that came to mind. And then what we have now are two estimates. A predicted value, those without, and a predicted value, those with the degree. So the point estimate of that coefficient on a dummy variable is not a slope. It's the difference between the two average values for the dependent variable between each of those two categories. So let's get into this regression output. So I am not giving a partial output anymore. We've gone through a whole bunch of partial outputs in module 14. We've gone through a few examples of partial outputs in module, uh, the first part of module 15. Here, it's, it's the same. All of those relationships, all of that's the same. What I want to focus on now is understanding what this output implies, what the output means, and how to interpret these different values. So, the first one, right? that estimated regression equation. Okay, so our estimated regression equation here, we have that predicted salary, negative 108.09 plus 47.18 age, plus 472.29 degree. 
And remember that degree, that's our dummy variable, whether you have the degree, yes or no. Interpret the R squared. Our R squared here is 92. which means that the person's age and whether or not they have a graduate degree, whether or not, yes or no, the person's age and whether or not they have a graduate degree captures 92% of the variation in salary. Now, I don't have it readily available, but if you go back and you look at the solutions that we had to the previous exercise where we were looking at salary is a function of age, that would be problem 15.1b, you will see here a fairly substantial increase in our R squared. 15.1b, if I recall, was around an 80% R squared. And the adjusted R squared was similar. I don't remember offhand what the adjusted R squared was. But here we can see, in fact, both of those values by incorporating degree, we've significantly improved our model by those two measures. So our R squared tells us whether or not the person has a degree and their age captures 92% of the variation in salary. Interpret the coefficients and interval estimates. So again, I'm focusing my attention on those estimated coefficients for the slopes, and in this case, on the dummy variable, that's not a slope. So in this case, on the age, this is a continuous variable, that age can take on any number of different values. The age implies that for each additional year older that a person is, each year contributes, on average, an increase in average salary of, this would be 47.18, but don't forget our salary here is measured in thousands of dollars. So that coefficient means that for each additional year older, average salary increases on average 47.18 thousand, which is really $47,180. So every year older that the person is corresponds with an increase in average salary, $47,018. So that's a marginal effect. You've had practice interpreting those marginal effects. This one now is a little bit different because when you hear me interpret that slope, you hear me say for each additional year or one more year or something like that, where I'm trying to make it clear that we're talking about a marginal effect, an incremental change in the value of that D, uh, independent variable. When we look at the coefficient on a degree or on a dummy variable, there is no marginal effect. It's whether you have it or you don't. I'm comparing the two values of my categorical. Now, in this case, my base case is not having the degree. So when I interpret this, it's relative to not having a degree. So here I can say having a graduate degree corresponds to an average increase in salary of 472.29 thousand. That's a big increase because that translates into an increase or a, an additional $472,290 relative to not having that graduate degree. Pretty significant increase, somewhat unrealistic, but it makes a point, right? It's not for each additional degree. Having a graduate degree corresponds to an increase in average salary of $472,029. Everything here is found to be statistically significant. Our model is also statistically significant. So both of our variables together are st uh, capture a statistically significant amount of the variation in salary. And both of our variables individually 
uh, contribute a significant amount in, in predicting and explaining the variation in our dependent variable in salary. Now, before I forget these intervals, so on age, we had that point estimate, each additional year older that you are, average salary increases by $47,180 per year. I'm 95% confident that average salary increases between $40,650 and $53,720 per year older that you are. So that's that interval estimate of that marginal effect. Having a graduate degree increases average salary relative to not having a de graduate degree by between $309,500 and $635,070. So again, not an incremental change, not a marginal effect. Having the graduate degree corresponds, or I'm 95% confident that having a graduate degree graduate degree increases average salary by between $309 and $635,000. Okay, so that is our first dummy variable exercise. And this one is the simpler of the ones that we are going to look at. The next exercise is going to answer what I'm sure is one of the questions that comes up as you're watching this. What if we have more than one category? Well, notice here, I had two categories, how many dummy variables that I need to capture both of that, that information, I needed one dummy variable. And having that one dummy variable with a value of zero or one allowed me to capture the difference, right? The difference in the average value of the dependent variable between those two categories. So if I have three categories, how many dummies am I going to need? Two. If I have four categories, I need three. Once again, you're going to see this thing, this k minus one, where k is the number of categories. And the coefficients are all relative to the base case not to any other category. They're relative to the base case. Okay, I've said enough. I'll say all of this again in the next video when we look at a slightly more complicated uh, model with uh, a couple of more levels or a couple more categories in our model. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Take care, bye-bye.